So we just about gotten to the point where we could test if our cell simulation is actually working. The cell simulation is written here. It has the ability to draw, it runs the simulations, uh, doesn't give us the ability to edit any of the properties right now. All we need is the ability to add it into a drawing. So inside of drawing main, we made this uh, map called creators and we need to add our cell simulation into here. So it takes a drawing and it gives back a new draw cell sim. Now draw cell sim takes quite a few arguments. One is the drawing. We also need to pass in a width, a height. We'll go with 300 and 300. There was a maximum population. I'll go with a thousand for that. We need the minimum split time, the maximum split time, and the number of simulations to draw. I'll go with one and two for the two times, and then we'll say 10 to draw. And these will just, you know, the idea is that after we've put in the properties panel, we'd be able to edit these. But for now, it's just something that we can have initially. So let's try adding. This is an interesting bug. don't even know exactly what causes that bug, but I've now seen it twice. Rebuild the workspace. Okay, what's interesting is that if you repaint, it fixes it. Um, something to, to check into, it actually seems like it might be a Scala FX bug. Um, okay, so here are the multiple lines from 10 different simulations. If we had the ability to edit things, we'd see that every time these run, we get slightly different curves. But basically the cell population starts off growing slowly, and we get something that's close to an exponential, but with randomness because every time it runs, we get something that's slightly different. So this demonstrates that what we have written so far is working roughly the way that we want. The functionality that we're lacking now is we aren't creating XML for this, uh, we aren't creating the properties panel, and we're probably not saving and loading. And we'll take a minute or two of videos to add some of that, but we'll probably just put most of it in the repository. So we need to have our prop panel, which is a ScalaFX node, and we're going to start it off as null. Now note there are no, lots of nodes. We actually want this top one, the ScalaFX node there. And so the properties panel if the prop panel is null, we need to build a new one. We're going to give back the prop panel in the end. And since we just have a whole bunch of different numbers that they can type in, we're going to use a VBox for this. So panel equals new VBox. Import that prop panel equals panel. Now we've written a helper method in our drawing main that you might not recall that, let's find it here, the labeled text field is something that is a shortcut for giving us a text field that's labeled that has actions associated with it. We pass in the label string, the initial value, and then the action of what's supposed to happen. So for example, to set our width, we're going to make a width field. And we are going to call drawing mains labeled text field. I want the string width here. 
its initial text should be the width as a string. And the action here takes a string, and I need to do two things. One is I need to set the width to be the double value of that string. And then, because we've changed something, oh, that jumped out, we need to run all sims. That's kind of long there, so how about we go ahead and put a carriage return. Okay, so that will give us our width field, panel children will be equal to a list of width field. We can come back here and we can run this. Cell simulation. And it should draw them at different widths. Turns out it does it even if I don't change the value. So if I just sit here and hit enter, you can see that the simulations always behave a little bit differently every time that we run this. There's really no point in spending time in the videos adding the additional fields to this or the XML. We've already seen that. I'll go ahead and add that offline and then put it into the repository. I'll also note that the textbook for, for this chapter gives an additional example. It's also a discrete event simulation, but instead of being splitting cells, it's bouncing balls. And so uh, doing collisions can be represented by discrete events. The balls just move basically on straight lines until they hit each other or a wall, if you have walls. And all of that can be nicely modeled with discrete events. If you have the textbook, I'd strongly recommend you go look at how that's built up and once again, our whole point here is we are using priority queues. So this shows you the flexibility of the priority queue data structure. And in this sense, we're also showing you the flexibility of the general idea of discrete event simulations.